Hello everyone, this is Habiba with Pedagogy of Social Sciences. Social Sciences as an integrating area of study context and concerns with the subtopic contributions of some eminent social scientists. In the previous class we have learnt about Christopher Columbus, today we are going to learn about Max Weber. Introduction, Karl Emil Max Million Max Weber was a German sociologist, philosopher, jurist and political economist whose ideas profoundly influenced social theory and social research. Weber is often cited with Emily Durkheim and Karl Marx as among the three founders of sociology. Let's understand his early life and family background. Karl Emil Max Million Weber was born in 1864 in Erfurt, province of Saxony, Prussia. He was the oldest of the seven children of Max Weber Sr., a wealthy and prominent civil servant and member of the National Liberal Party and his wife Helen Fallenstein, who partly descended from French Huguenot immigrants and held strong moral absolutist ideas. Weber Sr.'s involvement in public life immersed his home in both politics and academia. As his salon welcomed many prominent scholars and public figures, the young Weber and his brother Alfred, who also became a sociologist and economist, thrived in this intellectual atmosphere. In 1893, he married his distant cousin Marianne Schnitzer, later a feminist activist and author in her own right, who was instrumental in collecting and publishing Weber's journal articles as books after his death. While her biography of him is an important source for understanding Weber's life. Now let's see his methodology. Unlike some other classical figures, Comte, Durkheim, Weber did not attempt consciously to create any specific set of rules governing social sciences in general or sociology in particular. In comparison with Durkheim and Marx, Weber was more focused on individuals and culture and this is clear in his methodology. Whereas Durkheim focused on the society, Weber concentrated on the individuals and their actions and whereas Marx argued for the primacy of the material world over the world of ideas. Weber valued ideas as motivating actions of individuals at least in the big picture. Now let's see Max Weber's social action theory. Max Weber was one of the founding fathers of sociology. Weber saw both structural and action approaches as necessary to developing a full understanding of society and social change. Now what is a social action? Social action and Max Weber. The basic concept was primarily developed in the non-positivist theory of Max Weber to observe how human behavior relate to cause and effect in the social realm. For Weber, sociology is the study of society and behavior and must therefore look at the heart of interaction. Now let's see the definition of social action. Social action means taking steps to change the things that are wrong in our society and introducing new ideas and processes for doing things better in the future. For the purposes of a A-level sociology, we can reduce Weber's extensive contribution to sociology to three things. Firstly, he argued that Verhenstein or empathetic understanding is crucial to understanding human action and social change, a point which he emphasized in his classic study, the Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism. Secondly, he believed we could make generalizations about the basic types of motivation for human action. There are four basic types. Thirdly, he still argued that structure shaped human action because certain societies or groups encourage certain general types of motivation. But within these general types, there is a lot of variation possible. This final point can be illustrated by a quote from one of his most important works, Economy and Society, first published in the 1920s in which he said, Sociology is a science concerning itself with interpretive understanding of social action and thereby with a causal 
explanation of its course and consequences. Weber believes that there are four ideal types of social actions. Ideal types are used as a tool to look at real cases and compare them to the ideal types to see where they fall. No social action is purely just one of the four types. Number one, traditional social action. Actions controlled by traditions, the way it has always been done. That means the traditions we never change. That is traditional social action. Effective social action, actions determined by one specific affections and emotional state, you do not think about the consequences. For example, sometimes whatever we feel like doing, we will do, but we will never think if we do this thing, what will happen in future, that consequence we will never think, that comes under effective social action. Value rational social action, number three, actions that are determined by a Conscious belief in the inherent value of a type of behavior. For example, religion. That means whatever values given in our religion, inherently we will follow them. That comes under value uh, rational social action. Instrumental rational social action, number four. Actions that are carried out to achieve a certain goal. You do something because it leads to a result. To illustrate these different types of action, consider someone going to school in terms of these four ideal types. Traditionally, one may attend college because her grandparents, parents, aunts and uncles have gone to school. They wish to continue the family tradition and continue with college as well. When relating to affective, one may go to school just because they enjoy learning. They love going to college whether or not it will make them broke. With value rational, one may attend college because it is a part of his or her religion that everyone must receive the proper education. Therefore, this person attends college for that reason only. Finally, one may go to college because he or she may want an amazing job in the future and in order to get that job, he or she needs a college degree. Max Weber was particularly interested in the later of these. He believed that modern societies encouraged instrumental action. That is, we are encouraged to do things in the most efficient way. Example, driving to work. Rather than thinking about whether driving to work is the right thing to do, which would be value rational action. Weber believed that modern societies were obsessed with efficiency, modernization and getting things done, such that questions of ethics, affection and tradition were brushed to one side. This has the consequences of making people miserable and leading to enormous social problems. Weber was actually very depressed about this and had a mental breakdown towards the end of his life. Now let's understand rationalization according to Weber. Many scholars have described rationalization and the question of individual freedom in an increasingly rational society as the main theme of Weber's work. This theme was situated in the larger context of the relationship between psychological motivations cultural values and beliefs primarily religion and the structure of the society usually determined by the economy. Now, sociology of religion according to Weber. Weber's work in the field of sociology of religion started with the essay The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism and continued with the analysis of the religion of China, Confucianism and Taoism the religion of India, the sociology of Hinduism and Buddhism, and ancient Judaism. His work on other religions was interrupted by his sudden death in 1920, which prevented him from following ancient Judaism with studies of early Christianity and Islam. His three main themes in the essays were the effect of religious ideas on economic activities, the relation between social stratification and religious ideas and the 
distinguishable characteristics of western civilization weber saw religion as one of the core forces in the society now the protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism weber's essay is the most famous work it is argued that this work should not be viewed as a detailed study of protest protestantism but rather as an introduction into weber's later works especially his studies of interaction between various religious ideas and economic behavior as part of the rationalization of the economic system the religion of india the sociology of hinduism and buddhism the religion of india uh, weber's third major work on the sociology of religion in this work he deals with the structure of indian society with the orthodox doctrines of hinduism and the heterodox doctrines of buddhism with modifications brought by the influence of popular religiosity and finally with the impact of religious beliefs on the secular ethic of indian society like confucianism in china for weber hinduism in india was a barrier for capitalism the indian caste system made it very difficult for individuals to advance in the society beyond their caste activity including economic activity was seen as unimportant in the context of the advancement of the soul weber ended his research of society and religion in india by bringing in insights from his previous work on china to discuss similarities of the ancient belief systems he notes that the beliefs saw the meaning of life as other worldly mystical experience the social world is fundamentally divided between the educated elite following the guidance of a prophet or wise man and the uneducated masses whose beliefs are centered on magic in asia there was no messianic prophecy to give plan and meaning to the everyday life of educated and un- uneducated alike weber just opposed such messianic prophecies also called ethical prophecies notably from the near east region to the exemplary prophecies found on the asiatic mainland focused more on reaching to the educated elites and enlightening them on the proper ways to live one's life usually with little emphasis on hard work and the material world it was those differences that prevented the countries of the occident from following the paths of the early chinese and indian civilizations his next work ancient judaism was an attempt to prove this theory now economy and society in his magnum opus economy and society weber distinguished three ideal types of religious attitudes world flying mysticism world rejecting asceticism and inner worldly asceticism he defined magic as a pre religious activity theodicy of fortune and misfortune the theodicy of fortune and misfortune within sociology is a theory as weber suggested of how members of different social classes adopt different belief systems or theodicies to explain their social situation now politics and government in political sociology one of weber's most influential contributions in his politics as a vocation essay therein weber unveils the definition of the state as that entity that possesses a monopoly on the legitimate use of physical force weber wrote that politics is the sharing of state's power between various groups and political leaders are those who wield this power weber distinguished three ideal types of political leadership alternatively referred to as three types of domination legitimization or authority number 1 charismatic domination family and religion second traditional domination patriarchs patri patrimonialism feudalism number 3 legal domination modern law and state bureaucracy 
now social stratification weber also formulated a three component theory of stratification with social class social status and political party as conceptually distinct elements social class is based on economically determined relationship to the market owner renter employee etc social class is based on non economical qualities like honor prestige and religion partly party class refers to affiliations in the political dom- domain all three dimensions have consequences for what weber called life chances opportunities to improve one's life now economics weber regarded himself primarily as a political economist and all of his professional appointments were in economics though today his contributions in that field are largely overshadowed by his role as a founder of modern sociology as an economist weber belonged to the angest german historical school of economics the great differences between that school's interest and methods on the one hand and those of the neoclassical school from which modern mainstream economic economics largely derives on the other explain why weber's influence on economics today is hard to discern recognize or find out now let's conclude this topic the prestige of mark max weber among european social scientists would be difficult to overestimate he is widely considered the greatest of german sociologists and has become a leading influence in european and american thought so we come to the end of this topic thanks for your attention and time happy learning as motivation please do like share subscribe and comment below